dear attendees. Good evening, dear Atlanta. Thank you very much, all of you, for joining us and for uh, giving us and also you opportunity to share and to get know link, uh, know new language and experience. And the, today's topic is COVID-19 impact on hospitals and operations and the industry. And it is more than relevant than to speak about what actions are other hotels are doing. And with uh, this support, we have our Oksana Gunazarian as a speaker to speak about their experience, what they are doing at their hotel. Today, with uh, as mentioned, speaker of our lesson uh, will be Oksana Gunazarian. Uh, she is general manager at uh, Chicago Marriott uh, Hotel. And what I want to like to my, um, highlight the fact that there are only four general managers all over the world at, uh, that are uh, Armenians at uh, Marriott friends. And one of them is Oksana, and we are re really proud to have you with us and that you agreed to uh, share your experience and knowledge, the, the, especially the, during this period. Thank you, Oksana. It is a really honor to see you. And me, I'm the uh, founder and the initiator of this webinar, postprof.com. Uh, what we can say about Oksana, you all, uh, all of you have seen or information about our speaker before in the event but I will um, introduce one more time to get acquainted with her experience. She has more than 12 years, 12 years experience in this uh, hotel industry. Her experience is with general managers, Chicago Marriott, and uh, Hyatt Regency, director of operations, director of rooms, uh, rooms also at operations managers. And as you see, all her experience programs include all the main operational parts of the hotel. And task for projects, she has done for um, uh, Streamsong Resort and Western Washington. Also, she has professional education at Har uh, in Harvard National University, masters in economic relations and tourism management. And uh, some uh, short information about HostProf. I will not overload you because we have uh, repeated this a lot during our past webinars, and you can find information in our social uh, channels as well. HostProf is like a platform that we initiated in Armenia to collect and to create one. Uh, platform, United Platform for all the professionals, not only in Armenia, but also for abroad, as Oksana uh, is now here with us. Uh, now I will switch on my screen, Oksana Jan will pass to you, uh, but uh, before passing, I will introduce some short facts about the uh, uh, format uh, of the today uh, lesson. We will have questions during lessons, just to our attendees to be attentive to answer them and to like uh, interact with us and also concerning the Q&A, uh, we have Q&A uh, part at the end of the lesson. So we will have main part of the lesson, then Q&A, and during the lesson we will have questions from Oksana, and uh, we expect your uh, the question, uh, your answers and your activity. So Oksana Jan, thank you one more time. I cannot uh, <laughs> stop using Jan because it is like capital our Armenian. So I pass you the screen and uh, to speak, uh, talk to speak and to share your knowledge. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Teresa. I just would like to confirm if everybody can see me. Yes. Okay, Maybe. perfect. But I think it's Bill, so yes. Okay, perfect, perfect. Uh, thank you for introduction. As you said, I'm a general manager at Chicago Marriott Bridge, and it is uh, with a great pleasure that I'm here today. So I would like to thank you, Teresa, for uh, invitation. I will uh, quickly share my screen so then we can get started. Uh, subject of today's discussion is COVID-19 and impact on hospitality operations. Uh, it is a very hot subject in our industry right now, and it has impacted all of us in one or the other way. So uh, before we start, we're going to do a quick poll. And uh, the question for the poll is, have you made changes to your day-to-day -day operations already uh, to operate in a post-COVID environment? And the answers are yes, no, I don't know. I don't think it is necessary. So uh, you let me know, Teresa, when we have the results and then we can continue. You don't see the uh, poll procedure. 
I do see it. You see? Yeah, I got the message. So we have uh, seventy one percent for teach. Just wait to into hundred, and we'll I will uh, share the result. Perfect. Now quite good. <laughs> for the moment, eighty percent um, for it yes. They say yes, they are doing actions, and just twenty percent no. And for the other two options, there are zero quotes. So we have still people to keep their passwords. But uh, agree that this is a good number, eighty percent. So it means that they are really preparing their actions and to start to working after COVID-19 and in post-COVID-19 era. Correct, correct. Unfortunately, it's something that came to our way very unexpectedly, and everybody's mm -hmm. reaction to, to it has been really good, especially for hospitality sector, considering the fact we're one of the most impacted industries uh, to come out mm -hmm. all of this, including the airlines, of course, and gaming industry and cruises and resorts and everything else like that. So we can finalize. Uh, for the moment, it's eighty percent for the yes and twenty percent uh, no. Uh, there are answers. The rest two answers are zero. So uh, either they do, either they <laughs> or not, not they. Okay. Sounds good. We can we can move on. Uh, hope everybody can see my screen. Yes, yes, your screen. Okay, because okay, give me. All right, perfect. All right, so it was just a few days ago when our world was in a completely different place. And we all were busy with the very different things. We were running to our jobs, we were going to, our war, uh, to the university, attending a school, worrying about our neighbors, uh, about our parents, about everything else. But so did the tourism and hospitality few days ago, it was in a very different place than we are at right now. Global tourist growth has skyrocketed within the last 10 years. Really, we started seeing the growth in charts, but the last 10 years were really, really hot. And probably, this is not to anybody's surprise, whether you're in a big town, whether you're in a small, urban area, whether in an even smaller village, you probably saw multiple and multiple hotels coming along your side, multiple, multiple buildings coming along your side. And not to anybody's surprise, there was a high demand for it. Now, international tourists became part of the lifestyle. It wasn't only, uh, it wasn't anymore just a vacation outside. I wanted to go somewhere and have a great vacation or it wasn't only that uh, I needed to travel for a business. International tourists became part of everybody's lifestyle now. And when people travel, they were looking for certain things that they were not looking before. So our travel habits from 10, 20 years ago and our tourism in our day is completely different. Now, some of the most recent trends that we saw as a hoteliers in our industry was the personalization. People wanted more personalized travel. And not to anybody's surprise, uh, you know, if you're checking into the hotel and uh, your hotel information or the check-in clerk had a lot of information for you. We knew about our guest preferences. We knew what, get, what floors guest prefers. We knew what High, uh, higher floor, lower floor, we knew close to elevators, far from elevators. We knew everything about this guest. We also knew sometimes more information about their family, their kids, what they like, what they dislike, or even what was their favorite amenity and what to deliver to the room. People wanted to have more personalized experience and were choosing to go to those brands, to the hotels that could provide them with that. Ecotourism became part of the very important trends of the recent years. For example, as a general manager, I was asked multiple times by my guests what I am doing to make sure I'm recycling the product. 
So with that being said, for example, for my, this specific property, we do have recycling, which was used, uh, which is done after everything is disposed. We have a company who goes through it and arranges. But because guests did not see that portion, there are multiple times they came to me and asked me, hey, can I speak with somebody? And they asked me, why are you not recycling? And the answer to that is that we are recycling, but guests was not able to see that piece. So what we did, we purchased specific recycling bins and we put them in the room along with the trash receptacles, which completely changed the environment. And since then, I did not get that many questions about that. But this trend became one of the important trends for the, those guests, especially millennials that were choosing to travel and choosing which hotels to travel. The focus was on ecotourism as well. Now, local experience. Local experience was some of the things that we keep seeing more and more demand from our guests. People wanted to experience more of the local things. It wasn't just okay for them to go somewhere in a hotel and let's say to go to Italy and France and just order something that was just a burger. Nobody wanted that burger. Everybody wanted little piece of Italy, little piece of France in their meal to experience the local culture and to learn. Social media has changed our world. Probably you all know and part of your marketing is the social media. Instagrammable moments is what our guests were looking for. And not surprisingly, but our design of our space has changed to really create and give those Instagrammable moments for the guests that were seeking for those kind of experiences. People wanted to have experience that they could share share on the social media, get those followers, get those likes. That's a separate question, so I won't go there. Uh, smart design amenities. If before you would check into the guest room and you would get a nice clean room, a couple of electric outlets, that was great for you. Not anymore. In the recent years, we saw a big focus on a smart design places. And this big brand company started experimenting, experimenting with what we can get to, to give what our guests are looking for. I mean, your typical traveler in our days has like five to six electronic devices that needs to be plugged in. So there was a need to create those spaces that will accommodate those five to six electronic devices. People wanted to socialize. That's why we changed our lobbies. If you noticed our current hotels before, it was a very arrival lobby. Now lobby has turned into the social space. How many brands implemented this social hour in the lobby as a tradition? Uh, for example, Marriott went from the typical lobby to the great room. And we call it a great room because it's a place to get together. Sheraton shares their link, which is called the place to get to be lonely, but not alone. So those things became part of our everyday life. Um, Balanced food and dietary restrictions. As we know, before wasn't so much demand for a food. I mean, you have a great food, great, good looking meal, that was great. Balanced food and the high focus on a healthier options became part of the demands of the recent years. Uh, many dietary restrictions, as well as vegan, vegetarian, uh, keto dieters, were specifically looking for the meals and hotels that can actually accommodate them. And then, of course, the technology advancement, starting from the mobile check-in, from the little robots in the room, and some of the hotels perhaps using the robots at the front desk. All those became the focus and priorities and necessities for the travelers of most recent years. But that picture has a little bit changed. For the last two months, we all started focusing on different things. Uh, we'll talk about those things in a little bit, but right now I would like to share with you the marketing piece from some of the hotels out there. So as you can see right here, we have a different hotels. We have a Vin in Las Vegas. This is their landing page of their websites. And as you can see, the landing page and the message on the website just really supports the voice of the hotel of the property. So Vin in Las Vegas promotes their newly redesigned and very interactive uh, nicely designed amenities. The Epic Hotel speaks about their food and beverage options. Swiss Hotel likes to highlight their uh, relaxing experiments, the good breakfast and balanced food in the morning, and then Aria Hotel promotes the local culture.
And this is our marketing. This is our life. This is what we've been doing. We've been highlighting those great points of our hotels that we can sell. But all that kind of has changed right now. As a hoteliers, our life for the last two months has been very, very different. And we have been focusing on completely different things. Uh, our new priorities became clean, sanitized, and sense of safety environment. Uh, my personal hotel right now is not closed. We're operating at about 10 to 15% occupancy every single day. And I cannot tell you, every single person that I accommodate in our hotel asks me, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? How have you changed your cleaning process? How have you changed what were you doing before to provide me with a safe environment? So our message uh, and our goal as a hoteliers, especially those sales teams in a hotel, have to be completely different now. We have to focus on those things because the, our main goal here and the one who is going to win this game is going to be the one who can assure their customers that they're getting to the safe and clean and sanitized environment. And hotels are doing it in a different way. You've probably seen a lot on the social media from the big brands to the smaller properties. This is what we're doing. This is how we're handling it. Uh, there will be a lot of changes that we all will be doing. And of course, it depends on your market as well and your country and your local regulations. But here are some of the things that are very general and some of the things that I did in my hotel and I can give you feedback on that. Social distancing floor stickers. So you put the floor, social distancing floor stickers all over in your public area or in the lobby area to promote social distancing. And just to remind, because as a human, it's just not in our nature to be six feet away from person especially if we ask hoteliers too, we're so friendly people, we like to speak, we like to touch, we like, we like to say hello to people. Social distancing floor stickers became part of our public areas right now, and I have them too in my lobby. Elevator signs and control for the amount of people you have in elevators. Uh, you can see the sign right here, uh, the notice uh, six foot uh, practical social distancing, practice social distancing sign. Uh, that is part of the elevators. Our elevators are said to accommodate 10, 12, more people in the same time. Uh, unfortunately, we have to go with the new standards right now because elevator can no longer fit 10 people in them. So we have to have the signs that officially will tell that. And the reason for it, not because people are not gonna do it, but because we want to show what are we doing. So then people feel safe that there's actions and steps are done and taken from the property. Um, creation of new positions such as elevator attendant, lobby area, social distancing guide, those hotels that have thousand rooms and more, they will have to have those positions. Perhaps if you're a 100, 200 room property, you kind of don't need to worry about that, uh, having somebody in the elevator. But those big properties will do that just because the amount of space and people they naturally accommodate. Redesign front desk. Our front desk is a very, very high touch area, very sensitive area, because that's where you have a lot of exchange between you and your guests. We exchange passport, picture ID, credit card, we exchange with everything. So with that being said, there's a need to protect us, our employees, and the guests. There are two ways that we're doing it right now. Uh, one of the uh, ways is that front desk are creating a six foot social distancing barriers. And the second way, the way we're doing it is that front desk are also placing a plexiglass. On the next picture, I will show you what is it. I will show you what I did for my hotel and I will show you what are some other properties doing. Uh, because front office is such a high touch area, keys, credit cards, and other shareable items we need to find a way to prevent and protect those because those things are that a high probability of getting the germs and spreading a virus and getting all kinds of things just because they are such a high sensitive passive items. So right now in discussions are that UV lights will be used to disinfect those items. And then of course the welcome bag or welcome amenity. Some of the hotels already 
uh, like Vuin in Las Vegas, is providing a welcome bag in which they provide you with your personal hand sanitizer, little spray bottle, as well as the mask. Now, depending on your jurisdiction or your country and your local guidance where you're located, you might have an ordinance in place to always wear the face mask in a public. Like that's what it is for where I am right now. I'm in Illinois and that's the ordinance. So in other words, if you have a guest who is traveling in the lobby and they don't have a face covering or a mask, we should be able to provide with for them. So you want to have something ready that you can hand out to those guests because otherwise you can't really have them in the hotel because it's now became a local law. Uh, that's just when it goes to the public space. And here, as I said, you will see the two different approaches and two different designs that uh, are done by the front desk. So first one, when you're seeing on your left is my hotel, and we created the social distancing just by using some of the lobby furniture. Uh, and then with the floor stickers telling the guests that they need to stay six foot away and then by replacing a credit card. It doesn't look really great with the hanging cords, but that was the solution for immediate need because hotel is still open and operating. And for the second example, you're seeing an AC hotel, uh, Marriott in San Jose, and they chose to use the uh, plexiglass. Now, it's your personal preference and what do you like, what do you feel like is necessary for your hotel, but I highly recommend, especially for those properties, depending on which country you're at, if you're going to back reopening your operations, especially when we start getting international tourism, it's going to be very important that hotels do these things because, you know, tour tourists are very observatory. People are observe a lot of things and they will be asking a lot of questions like, I saw this in this hotel, are you not doing it? How are you doing this and you're not doing that? You know, our guests are very curious and we totally will get those questions. Now, room cleaning became a very hot subject of discussions and not to anybody's surprise, right? Uh, you probably heard the announcements from Marriott, from Hilton already, press releases, the new programs, and we will review it in a little bit. But right now, all I can say is that we are moving from cleaning the room to sanitizing the room. And we're going to focus in the areas that we haven't really focused before because there was no real need to clean those safe buttons for anyone. Well, that's what it is right now. I'm not going to read every single thing here, but just to know that uh, high touch areas and high touch surfaces like the buttons on the safe thermostats, uh, lamps, switches, uh, lights and lighting controls, closets, hangers, iron, ironing board, and any other high touch item in your uh, room must be sanitized. There is a couple of discussions also that after sanitizing, we're going to put the stickers on those areas after each time we do that to let the guests know that this area has been sanitized just to provide that additional peace of mind and get them feel a little bit more comfortable. Now, I'm not even going to say about glassware and disposable cups. If your brand still carries glassware, you probably want to go and confirm with your brand. I personally think people will not be touching those glasses in your rooms. I don't think there is any need to have them. But again, if you're a branded hotel, you probably want to check on your brand with that. And of course, in the rooms, we have a lot of menu directories, cards, and other items that tell guests about the information uh, with, uh, about the local areas, especially for international destinations. And I would probably recommend you go ahead and remove them. You don't, we probably want to remove them because those are areas that are very high touch. And if you haven't, people most likely are going to ask you that question why you haven't done so, which means you kind of want to switch to the electronic system of doing those things. This is the most recent announcement from Marriott. And this has been a lot of discussion. This brings a lot of conversations to my world of events and what are we going to do with this? What you're seeing on this picture is electrostatic spraying technology that uses high classification of chemicals and disinfectants recommended by Center of Disease Control and World Health Organization to treat known pathogens. You know, people are asking me, am I using this, what I think about this, and what I'm going to do with this. 
So the information about this specific area is that there has been a press release on this. Nobody's using this yet. I'm not using it too. And this electrostatic spraying technology, what you're seeing in the picture, the cheapest one is $1,000. So it's a very, very expensive technology that um, has not been purchased, it's not in the plants. In addition to it, it provides you with a very high level of chemicals. So after everybody, anybody uses this, you need to kind of go and wipe down. So I personally think that this will not be used in the smaller areas, smaller guest rooms, maybe those properties that 500 and 1000 rooms will kind of do that, especially public areas would be good for, I don't know if this necessarily will be used in the guest rooms and depending on the brand or size of your guest room, but that's yet to come. This has been a very hot subject of the discussions right now. So. But the most important picture, but the most important takeaway about this is not the electrostatic sprayer, right? And we'll speak about this in a little bit. But as of right now, the one most important takeaway is that Marriott took the step forward and said, this is what I'm going to do. This is how I'm going to provide the safe environment. The message is more important rather than the tool here. And we'll talk about it in a little bit. The next uh, area that is going to be, uh, that is highly impacted is of course food and beverage. Food and beverage operations make everybody so happy regardless in where you're at and have been a really, really high focus of everyone. Um, you can see um, people sharing the food pictures, the food boards, the food trends, everything food related. Right now on the left side, you're seeing the picture of uh, hotel and that's my hotel that's my lobby and the restaurant of course they are closed right now we're not operating any food and beverage facility but when we do come back i will not have that many chairs in my bar or my restaurant probably all i'm going to put there is going to be maybe five that can accommodate six foot social distancing right now when we speak with our guests and customers one thing that i'm uh, that kind of starts getting to us is that everybody's wearing a mask, especially a little bit elderly population. Everybody's wearing a mask and they feel protected. But when they have to go to the restaurant, they will have to take the mask to be able to consume. And that sounds like a lot of our guests are going to prefer in the future to have a privacy during their meal which we anticipate a lot of in-room dining, a lot of to-go orders, give me my stuff, I'm going to the room. We'll see how the theory confirms, but right now that's kind of what is uh, being observed. Our food delivery process starts from kitchen to the server and to the customer. Well, Everything was going to be done to try to eliminate that second step and make it as much more easier from the kitchen to the customer just to avoid that extra exposure. Now, it will perhaps happen for some of the hotels, some of the hotels it will not, depends which way you're going and depends the size of your hotel and type of the hotel you have. But if you do decide to do that, everything will need to be sanitized. The sanitation of the tray, that also will tell the guests that this tray has been sanitized to give them that extra trust. As well as cutlery, glassware, plates, cleaned at table side or delivered packaged already are going to be very important because it's going to be the way to assure your guests that this was properly cleaned, this was properly sanitized. Replacement of salt and pepper shakers. You don't want to have any salt and pepper shakers on your, uh, tables. This high touch, high touch item area, everybody knows that a thousand other people touched it, nobody's going to clean them. So move from those to the packets, provide them packets, one time use. Pay at table functionality will certainly increase and we'll try to eliminate as much as possible the credit card exchange. Now it depends on investment, it depends on technology, so perhaps not everybody is going to be able to do that right away as well as ability to provide an e-receipt in lieu of paper receipt is going to be important. But again, that's something that depends on investment and not everybody's going to be able to do that right away. However, digital menu boards 
or disposable menus are going to be important. Right now, when I reopen my hotel, I'm going to have a disposable printed menus. It's a one-time menu. You get to choose what you want. Menu goes to the garbage. And then, of course, most recent discussions that we are not going to have buffets. Everybody loves the buffet. So it's a, such a heartbreaker for everyone. But we're speaking, there will be no more buffets uh, in the future for us. And if there will be a buffet, then it's going to be a very uh, attended and very prepackaged and very protected type of way and not what we have been doing most recently. But this also doesn't change only restaurant. This also impacts our banquets and food and beverage events that we have. Those 500 people weddings, how do we do them anymore? Right now uh, in discussions that we're seeing is that we do for the table of 12, we put table of five with a big social distance. Now, that's something that we as a hoteliers can do, but we cannot prevent people from going and talking to each other. There's nothing we can do about that during the event or after a couple hours of the event. So um, the way we do meetings, on this picture, you can see one of the hotels redesigned and kind of a, put in a picture together of what the meetings are going to look like if we were to protect the social distancing and six foot social distancing guides. And right now you can see this is a very sad looking room with the uh, speaker being on the corner and with the chairs accommodating only fewer people. So uh, one of the things that I already know and we're speaking with our audiovisual companies is that we probably will have before meetings of 100 are probably gonna go to in a three different rooms right now with one being uh, televised in the other two. That's possibly one of the options that we're going to do because the government restrictions that we have in place are not going to allow us to do that. Same for the weddings. We will not be able to put 500 people in one room anymore. And some of the people simply will not go because they're afraid. There are some people that take this very seriously and there are some people that are not. So uh, we will have to find a golden middle how to make this work for us. It's clear already that technology is going to win in this game. Everybody is going to be technology focused. So some of the meetings that I have in the rest of the year, we're already in discussions to spread around five rooms, put the big screens and televise. That will have to be one of the ways that we can do that. Food and beverage, uh, as well as focus on the amenities. As we know, anybody who you check into your hotel and you make them, but you want to feel them warm, welcome, you send them an amenity, something that we all hoteliers do. Uh, on the left side here, you're seeing a very traditional amenity. You have your uh, welcome arrival note, you have your cutlery here, and you have your nicely designed chef amenity. Well. Everything is great about that, except not in our new world, right? People do not want any of that. They don't want their fork and knife to be there. They don't want their amenity to be sitting and being exposed. And they don't want this, the card from the general manager even. Nobody wants to touch it anymore. So what I envision kind of is things are going to change more towards items that we're seeing here. Uh, packaged, closed, ready to go. And now our chefs will have to come up with a lot of, lot of new ideas and what they're going to do. I'm sure it can still be nice and beautiful, but it will not be the same. Um, I think we can do another poll before we move forward with the rest of the presentation. And the question for this poll, question for this poll is, is your future marketing plan reflect safe, sanitized, secure facilities and the question and the answers are yes i believe it is important no it is not important i want to do what i was doing before it worked good so we'll give a few minutes okay. um, can you summarize keep yeah we'll be giving the answers The situation uh, concerning FMBs, I think, is the poorest one because the food and beverage department was the like 
second revenue stream with the hotel uh, and uh, it will be absolutely changed and also why not meeting games yeah. i don't i uh, wait to see what will go and go in armenia because it's it will be in a way slightly different but for the chain hotels it will be the same because the standards will come from the head but let's see what it will be I think the worst, uh, you know, the most important about the hotels and the worst scenario, if one of the hotels anywhere in the world gets exposed or the news that come out and that tells this is what happened in this hotel, it's going to ruin for everyone, no matter what you do. It impacts everyone because that's what people believe in. So we have uh, 100% what it uh, and the result is uh, the first option yes I believe it is important it is about 93% and only 7% I'm going to do what I was doing before it works good okay very interesting like 93% uh, for the first option that they believe that is important and uh, they plan to do actions also very interesting that's great. So a couple things, we've discussed a lot of information, but there's a lot more to it. Probably what we just reviewed is five to, I don't know, five to 10% of everything. There's a lot more that we're doing. However, it is not important what you have. It is important what you do with what you have. Because we all can do many other things. And I know everybody's doing it, everybody. Whether you're brand hotel, non-brand hotel, small hotel, not small, Airbnb, or you're just owning and le leasing your apartment. I know everybody's doing it. But again, in a business, just like in the life, it is not only important what you have, it is important what you do with what you have. That is why I wanted to pay your attention on a Marriott press release and some of the other big brand hotels press releases, they came out first, they put their foot forward and they said, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm doing because that's exactly what every single guest is looking for right now. Every person that checks in in a hotel asks us this question. We don't have many arrivals. It's like 10 arrivals a day, but every single question is asking. And I can expect even when international travel rebounds, and we start getting those international travelers, it's going to be even a hotter subject. There are some websites that are kind of a private, um, like a blog style flyer talk, or when, when these high traveler people go and they're just, they just talk to each other in the forums and stuff. And you can imagine what's going on in those forums right now. Everybody's telling each other, oh, I went to this hotel. This is what happened. That's that. That's, you know, this is what I'm seeing. Is your hotel doing that? So especially for international travel, it's going to be very important. What you do and how you tell the world about what you're doing, because that's going to be our one priority, our very, one of the very important goals. And now it's a story time. I'd like to share with you a story that, uh, that happened here, which is actually highlights a very good point. When everything was just starting, and there were no lockdowns, people were still, still free to walk and everything was in place, um, but we all were hearing the news about, okay, this is what's happening, this is what's coming, and discussions were in place. We all had, uh, here all the restaurants started, you know, some of them were closing, some of them opening. Um, one of the people went to the local restaurant. And when they went to the local restaurant, the owner of the restaurant, they sat down at the table, the owner of the restaurant came out and introduced herself saying, hi, my name is so I'm so I'm an owner of this restaurant. And I just want to let you know, this is what I'm doing to keep our customers safe. I just, and she went over five bullet points that she was doing. I removed the chairs. I reduced the room size. I reduced um, the seating in the bar. This is what cook is doing. This is what waitress is doing, blah, 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 blah. Now, She's not doing anything that anybody else is not doing. Everybody else is doing the same thing. But what she did, she did make that extra step and she went and she communicated and she let, you can imagine what happened with that restaurant. It's all over the place. Everybody talks about it. And now when we're closed and people are just doing a takeout and to-go food, 
everybody's taken and to go food from that specific place because that's how they felt. And then the word of mouth, the rumors, if you say, spread around, right? This is what these people were doing. I went there, they're great. This is what they're doing. This restaurant owner, which is not branded, has nothing to do with any big box hotels or any big box restaurant, just took her own action to come forward and say that because she felt that that was an important and it made her she's all over the place i mean the entire town is talking about that place now as a general manager i probably can't do the same because i'm not in the hotel all the time and probably you are not in your hotel all the time and you, we, we can't do that considering what we operate but there are other ways that we can do those things and which are very important to keep us successful um, one of the ways is uh, guest arrival letter Right now, every guest who checks into our property gets an arrival letter and communication on how we are doing and what are we doing to keep our facilities. And everything, it's a big letter that explains and every, everything is outlined there. Then it's a pre-arrival communication. Pre-arrival communication focuses on all the information saying that, uh, providing the same information before guest gets to you. In this game, it's going to be very important what we do pre during and post guest arrival or guest stay in your hotel because it's all about that communication. Of course, your lobby signage is going to be one of the things that is also going to promote this. And then your digital marketing. Those pictures then you saw with the marketing message on prior screen are going to be very different right now. Your digital marketing should be focusing on safe, sanitized, secured, because that's what's going to win this game right now. With that being said, I don't have uh, much anymore. I think we can open up to questions. Uh, if you have anything or if you need anything, we can always send it out to you uh, and uh, reach out to me or Teresa with any information you have, and then we'll be happy to support. And that's all I have for today. Uh, Valente, can I ask you to switch your uh share screen in order me to be seen because when... let me see how i can do that mm -hmm. okay perfect oh okay. great thank you very much uh, you uh transferred like you gave a lot of information concerning all the actions you are doing now uh, we have discussed one topic, and uh, but uh, what I want, I want to ask you one more time in order to share with our colleagues. What do you think about the housekeeping stuff? It's uh, the like the quantity of the maids um, should be aided, or how should it be organized in order to provide all your missions, all the procedure concerning sanitization, and uh, as we know, it will uh, increase like the timing of the room cleaning. Normally, it can be 30 minutes, now it would be 40 minutes, and it also assumed that it will cause uh, it stuff. What is your opinion on this? And uh, th this will also aid the cost and uh, financial, uh, num financial factors will change in the case of this. What is your opinion? Okay, yes, very good question, because also a very tough situation, right? Uh, Considering the situation, considering the, our, our everyday life right now, that our owners, our investors lost so much uh, money right now, nobody's looking to really add the cost. But also, we have a very big How do we ensure these people clean everything that needs to be clean with no additional time? So, one of the things that we are doing now, and I recommend probably everybody to do, is not to clean stayover rooms. No. Because that way you can give that 15, 20 minutes to the rooms that are departures. And not cleaning the stayover rooms could be easily communicated uh, with your guests and supported by your guests. You can say for your protection, for my protection, we're not going to your room, we're not cleaning it. If you need anything, please let us know. We will knock and drop to your room. But also if you have any information, we'll be happy to uh, su supply you with or also provide the guests with uh, packets that are pre-bundled, pre you know, pre and things like that. Additional garbage bags that guests can put out in the lobby and then we will be taken out. 
But the only way to do that is to be to eliminate something because um, if we want them, uh, if we want them to be able to do that, we will have to add that additional time. Has not a question, but just an opinion. Great uh, from Lucine. Great, excellent presentation. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Lucine, for watching and staying with us. Uh, I was looking. I was reading another article concerning Four Seasons Hotel, and uh, they did like as you said. Uh, they provide three types of uh, beds: one for the garbage, second for the bedding, and the third for the all the beds uh, that are not uh, food and uh, etc. And you should put all in front of your room, and uh, even maids and housekeeper do not need to enter to your room. So all of the as I see, all of the brands are doing actions concerning this information. No, it, it is very absolutely it has changed our world unfortunately i think we're in it for a long run and as a hotel industry as a resort as a cruise as a airline, we have been impacted the most probably the most uh, negative way out of all of this and it's going to change us it's going to change the thing the way how we do things but it's going to be new and it's going to be different we will revamp and we will go back to what we're doing because nothing is going to stop us. It's just going to be different what we were doing before. Exactly. We have also one opinion. Thank you for serving from Irina Hazanian. And we have question from, uh, two questions already. One from Guyane. Dear Roxana, thank you so much for sharing with us your knowledge and ideas about the future actions. My question is that what do you think? Do we need to increase the prices of the rooms? and other services at the hotel or vice versa to decrease? Uh, it's very important right now that we don't do anything with those. I think you want to, in regards to decreasing, you probably want to kind of review what, what's everything in your area and still provide that uh, marketing piece and make sure that you're in a good align with those hotels. <laughs> But also drop your rate will not make um, will not make a big difference because either you have a guest who is traveling, either you have a guest who is not traveling. So I, I think right now staying neutral is the best thing. Uh, unfortunately, there were hotels that I saw that have rates very increased, and that's sending a bad public message. That's not a good thing because now that's becoming to a price gouging, especially. So I would say kind of right now, stay neutral and as always play by the market. Other hotels doing in your market. Even the discounts, also the uh, wise policy like to discount a lot. Also, so I do not think that it will work because uh, when you see very discounted rate, you think that something is wrong with this hotel. Because people like in the main travelers understand that, that when you want to have value, you should give price. And the discounted price is that doesn't always bring you a good hotels, right? Like for example, good guests. Right now we notice mm -hmm. the increase in a scam, right? Uh, in those guests that are just there to, you know, maybe throw a party because they're bored sitting at home. I mean, I love our guests, not saying anything wrong about that. But uh, over the weekend, you know, we had the discounted rates and every weekend it's a, some sort of a drama because people get drunk, you know, they just join your property. So it's not, again, it depends which market you're at. Uh, it, it's not always the best situation. Um, it, a lot of things are going to change right now because depending on your location, you are going to be experiencing a different thing. Some, some areas will not reopen. Some, some countries will not reopen. So there are still people that want to go to the vacation. They will be going to the vacation. I guess it's very fresh and new right now. So a lot of things would be different. We have another question from Lucine. Uh, thank you for the useful information. What do you think? How should the technical problems solve for in-house guests? And technical problems, do I understand like an internet connection or anything that requires you to go to the room? Is that? Yes, uh, concerning the entry of the room and like if, if, if it can be a problem, I guess, from in bathroom, if we like to minimize uh, the interaction with the guest, how the right. technical problems should uh, right. be solved. So right now with the information that we have in hand, 
we know this virus, and this is from official information sources, that virus doesn't leave a long time on the surfaces, right? So for example, for hotel cleaning right now, we don't let our uh, associates go to the room uh, after three hours only, not less. And when everything was started, I was doing 72 hours. So the best practice would be, of course you will have an emergency situation, that's for sure. But the best practice would be to ask the guests for your protection and for our protection, if you can uh, let us know what would be the best time to go into your room, we would like to be there when you're not there, and uh, when you are uh, there out for some period of time. And of course, when we go there, we need to make sure we have a personal protective equipment on with the gloves, with making sure everything is closed in our skin, with a mask, uh, which is something new to for all of us to adjust. And I know people are not really liking it, uh, but that's kind, of what we, that's kind of what we need to do. It's important, you can't eliminate completely, but it's important that you show your staff that you're taking the steps to protect them and your guests that you're doing the same thing. It is for both of them, not only guests, you are protecting also your staff because you do not know uh, what situation of the your guests. Correct. And uh, we have one question concerning what do you think people who will travel will prefer hotels or separate apartments? Which one is seen from your point of view? Thank you. Yeah, I think hotels are going to win in this game. Because uh, as you saw, those big announcements that came from Marriott, and those guys are doing everything to tell the guests, trust us, trust us, trust us. Personally, me from speaking from different people, I know they, some people really like apartments because it's more convenient for them. But I know right from what I'm seeing right now, the market is shifting more towards the uh, hotel brands because there is a little bit more trust in that because also big box hotels can do those things right i mean individual uh, apartment owners sometimes don't have all the investment to put all the stickers around or don't have this information and you always question like even housekeeping piece right when we come to the hotel housekeeping laundry we know it needs to be clean it's specific chemical specific temperature specific process well you don't get that in the apartment in the apartment, your laundry is washed in a regular laundry machine, and then you use the bedding for the guests that used it prior. So just that fact that people start thinking about it, it's questionable for them right now. Personally, I was thinking that like the accommodation rentals will increase, but as you mentioned, these points of the standard uh, like changed my, <laughs> my opinion because it will affect for sure. Uh, and we have another question dear, from Lucina Arsenia. Uh, dear Alexander, thank you very much for your interesting presentation. How are you doing with staff? Are you doing some terminations of your staff? staff? I'm sure that this situation will help. Yeah, unfortunately, Lucina, thank you for uh, uh, kind words. I appreciate. Unfortunately, we have laid off 80, over 80 people in my hotel. And right now we're operating with just a 10, 10 to 50 people on property. Unfortunately, this is what was necessary to do to keep the doors open, which will warrant bringing those, those associates back when we reopen. Um, as you know, there are multiple hotels that closed and they just could not survive no revenue. But staying open, it was, was necessary to do for the specific property. And I think, with all my colleagues and hoteliers that I spoke with, everybody is kind of in the same boat right now with mm -hmm. uh, staff elimination. Whoever, it's important if you eliminated the staff, what are we doing for staff? Stay in touch with them. Do your Zoom meeting, do your Zoom party, send a newsletter, talk to them. It's about the comfort that we let them know. And also it's going to be important that you use this downtime. Of course, you can't make them work, but to use this downtime for those people that are working to get everything done that you can't in your usual environment because you're so busy with running day-to-day -day operations. I have one question like from uh, Lucine that uh, I'm afraid the prices will go down due to less demand. This is concerning the prices and discounts, I think Lucine shared her opinion. And also we have another question without names, anonymous. 
Uh, you have shared an information with us that you will ask guests to pay cash rather than to pay by credit card. But as for the country, it is safe not to use cash money as the virus is kept on it for a long time. Maybe it will be better to use credit card by wireless options. I don't think we can eliminate cash as of right now as much as we want, right? Because some people just simply don't have that. And if you have a guest, I think you're going to make a decision between take the guest or decline the guest. It is true that we don't want to take the cash because of the spread of the germs. But also the question is, can we? Can we come up with a process? Can we have a gloves at the front desk that the associate will be wearing, taking a cash, locking it to the bank or putting it in the zip bag or whatever bag you want, and then taking a gloves and disposing them? Okay. Uh, it's gonna have to be with the process because I don't think as much as we want to, unfortunately, I don't think there is enough, especially for international destinations, I don't think there is a way to completely eliminate the cash. Exactly. We have also a message from Anna Itarutunian. Thanks for interesting discussion. And uh, you, you, I was thinking of your thought concerning the marketing and you were uh, uh, absolutely uh, right that if you, uh, even we do actions, it was not even do actions, if they do not advertise this, if they do not show this, this will not work for sure because like idea and also my marketing should work together. And so I was thinking, why not to start uh, doing photo shoots at the hotels? I understand that this additional extent, but I think that new photo shoots of the rooms of the with the new uh, like cleaning um, standards or uh, with this kit that you mentioned in the uh, during check-in that you provide this mask and other uh, protection uh, and uh, why not to do photo shoot and to advertise on uh, advertise on this and, yeah. and to put also in our website uh, direct website right. uh, like to show we are providing this and this will really work i think yeah i mean marriott is doing it they took the photo of the guy with the electrostatic sprayer that's important right because people engage more with their eyes rather than with ears so if do, doing that is way more important, that just tells more about your property. It's a great idea. Someone we do not have a question, Dr. Nadia, we'll wait our colleagues to uh, write their questions and to sum, sum up in their mind. Uh, I have an, uh, another question concerning the revenue management. What do you think on this? Like. Uh, it should be, we should like plan some kind of strategies and we should fully use all the tools of the revenue management or, or it should be go like upcoming years, whatever we, we bring, we bring, whatever we get, we get. It, how should be our strategy? Like in short, um, can you explain? Yeah, I think, I think on that, we need to highly rely on data that we have. And that data is going to come in from STR, uh, where we get our star reports weekly, and when we do our forecast and when we do our budget, go with what you have on the books. Be very conservative. Now, if you get something additional, that's great. But go with conservative. The worst thing could be we make this beautiful budget and we plan on bringing all this labor and it doesn't happen. I think we already started getting those numbers. We know our ref part is going to be down. So... That's where we need to go. Don't make decisions that are maybe based on emotions or based on what I want, or maybe based on my investors' decision. But those decisions will not be good. We should make it based on specific data. I want to understand if it is not, it is only from my side, but I cannot hear you clearly. Just a minute to understand if uh, our attendees are listening to us or there is a problem. Let me know if let me know if you guys can hear. Uh, it, now it's I, now I can hear you, but uh, if our attendees uh, like leave a short message in the chat, it would be better because uh, it was some kind of noise and. Okay. I can hear you now clearly, but for okay. their side, I think they they as well because it it like. Perfect. Uh, so we have. Uh, it's okay now, Dave. It's okay. So it's okay, okay, perfect. 
I think the important decision here, it's important only to be based on data that we have. And we do have some of the data already from like China, how their hotels reacted and how their hotels revamped. We do have, we're gonna have those numbers based on Italy, how their numbers started reacting, how their numbers uh, are acting. But those decisions we should make on the, based on the numbers that we get from economic organizations, from Oxford Economical University, they do that from the, uh, STR reports that does that, uh, and then be conservative. If you get a good news, it's good. But if, if you don't do it, what you have on the book, if you have an event and weddings, you call, you figure out if it's happening or they're going to cancel. Last thing you want to do is rely on something and then it gets canceled or they say we can't do that. For the dimension STF, uh, last week I saw their post concerning them who are um, prepared, who are willing to travel again. You remember what we have discussed concerning your researchers, so that people um, younger they are okay with traveling, but people older right. from uh, more than sixty, and like the STR report and statistic was the same, about the same, and uh, about twenty percent and more are willing to travel, and uh, they do not, uh, they are not so concerned of these viruses. So we can say that the, like our top customers will be young generation, that is generation Z or a little bit elder. Correct, correct. And then also what's going to change, some countries are going to remain closed for a long period of time. Uh, so there won't be possible to travel to those countries, which is going to create a compression to other countries to go to. So it's kind of, it, it, it means that maybe you will get a share that you were not getting before. Mm -hmm. exactly. We have another question, as we know some guests even before uh, were thinking that most hotels do not clean bed sheets, towels, and etc. in a proper way. What we should do now to prove that, that all the sheets are clean and no virus is on them? I think you don't need to change anything in your what you're doing. If you're having that specific in your reality, you need to look into how to have this question. Is it 80% of things that we're not doing or maybe one of two? Just, uh, can you uh, speak uh, again? I want to have something. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, yes. I think it's individual. If it's general perception, you want to know, do I need to do anything about it? If it's one out of you know, six months or I don't know, once a month, you want to look into that individual. But if it's an issue, it's a problem that you're seeing more and more and more, you want to address it in a different way. One of the ways I know that people are going to do is going to put those stickers uh, on specific areas. So you can put a put an additional message, maybe a card saying that this was, we're happy to provide you with the freshly, fresh linen, blah, 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 stuff like that. But I think if you're seeing more and more, maybe it's a housing issue that maybe it's not a perception. If one hotel has called guests mentioned it a couple of times, maybe there is an issue. Maybe, maybe it's one associate who's causing it, right? Because it's possible if you have, like me, I have eight floors, I have 15 room attendants. If one is doing a bad job and I'm going to hear from the guest, you know, my sheet had a hair on it, but then it's easy traceable. It's that one associate. We have another question from Mr. Hovani. What do you think uh, can be done in order not to have many guests checking in at the same time? I think it's all about going to be about your arrival. They will be checking in. They will be. Uh, there, you can't prevent them. Uh, one way to prevent, you can call in advance and ask about the arrival time or email and ask about what time you arrive in and say, you know, because coronavirus safeguards in place, we have, we, you know, we have specific check-in time. You can do that. But I think the most important, if you get a crowd, you need to have a person who specific waiting areas and the specific rooms that you will have designed that you can tell them, you know, here's a bellman meets the lobby, five people waiting in this room, five people waiting in another room, and five people waiting in another room. So somebody's there to coordinate them. Yeah, exactly. But when the hotel has small lobbies, it will be a little bit hard. Uh, I think it, they probably they should stay outside to, 
like to keep the turn and uh, to come by one one. But by the way, the concern it is there was another solution it, again that the tall technology will win. There was the um, application again for mobile check-ins and also for this uh, room key card, like the because the key card also the, they are like means to transfer the virus. And also this mobile application, I think that if the before in our hotels in Yerevan, it was something new and uh, something for the new hotels and uh, maybe branded hotels. Now it will be like more accessible and more uh, also fam fam famously used in other hotels, independent hotels as well. Because as I see, it is not so uh, expensive and it will reduce or then reduce, then uh, increase the expenses because it's just an application you purchase and pay monthly. And this uh, this is the place that, as you mentioned, the technology will win because you will reduce all these uh, high touch areas, these cards and checking procedures. And uh, Correct. and what do you think, Aksana Jan? Your uh, like your vision? Um, I'm not uh, like sh I do not. Want to like? I want you to share your opinion uh, concerning the uh, COVID situation. Like when it will not finally finished, or uh, how, when the station will come back to us uh, as it was, because two there are years predictions. Least. That two years. Two years. Two years okay. at least. Uh, uh, I said one year. You know. Yeah, at least it's going to take two years. Unfortunately, at least it's going to take two years for us to start going to little bit normal, little bit normal. All this year is gone. We're all going to hear about wearing a mask. It's going to be our everyday life. If it's not, if your government is a little bit relaxed on this, you're still going to get it from your guests. Everybody's it's going to be a discussion. I think it's going to take about two years for hotels to go back to their levels uh, of occupancy and the food and revenue, food and beverage revenues. Um, and that's well for people to start being scared, right? You still, you have, you have millennials and some people that are like, oh, I don't care. I'm just going to be careful. That's it. But you have people that are terrified to live in this life right now, that they're not leaving their house. They get in everything ordered. They will not go to the hotel. Um, we have then, here another question from Anna Italia. Uh, it will be difficult to organize check-in for big groups of trees. Uh, and what is your opinion about changes of check-in of big groups? For the group check-ins, I think it, it will be necessary for you to be able to organize them by, like, for example, before convention hotels have a separate check-in desk. So if it's a group check-in, you want to see, is there an option where you can pre-check them in so you don't have to do one by one check-in? And then you will rise the us, you take them to the separate room. Doesn't matter, you're not worried because they're all the same people in the same class. You take them in a separate area. Again, if you know it's just a minute. Can you try one more? Yes. What about now? Now, now, now it's quite good. Okay. So if you have that group who is arriving, you want to see if you can pre-check them in so the check-in process is eliminated. When they arrive, you take them to separate area. Maybe it's a meeting room, maybe it's a hall, maybe depending on your hotel. You can have it and the key with the rooming list to the group coordinator if there is one, or you just quickly go with a picture ID check and with a key handout. So the process is quick and easy and it's not you also can have a separate desk set up in that area, so it's only group check-in. You brought the group, you took them to that area, you situated them, checked them in, they're gone. So they're not creating a compression in the lobby. Okay. Um, I think the last question is, uh, if you will allow, allow my question and we can sum up uh, with the web uh, open lesson, if you don't mind. Do you think this COVID situation will aid some kind of new positions, uh, like new, uh, new jobs in hotels. Maybe a person who is responsible for the sensation or a person who is responsible for COVID uh, marketing, I don't know, anti-COVID marketing. Do you think that it, it will like push some kind of new positions, new jobs and new roles in the hotels? Yeah. Uh, or if uh, we'll, it, it or is. If we'll stay 
No, it will. I think hotels and maybe even corporations will start having more of the risk management roles. Before, what was our risk management? You know, we were more of, okay, you, we don't want to associate to suffer, guest incident and things like that. Everything was lightly. Maybe it's going to be more of an HR function. It depends on the size of the hotel, but some properties will start more focus on risk management. In addition to it, like big Las Vegas hotels already have the elevator person. I mean, what kind of position is that? But you do have a person who is going to stay in the elevator, make sure buttons are sanitized, click on the buttons and make sure no more, you know, two, three people go to the elevator. Those big conventions are For other properties, I think also having those can you hear me? Yes, yes, now I can. For the smaller hotels, I think certainly risk management is going to be a large focus, uh, as well as of um, as well as of the uh, situations more of a, in crisis situations, right? The teams or the groups that people will be able to have. Can you check what was going on with me? Those yeah, I think I answered a little bit, and I got a lot of uh, kind words. So thanks everybody for the kind messages and the kind words. I don't think we have any questions, but they look. We have a question concerning, can we share your presentation with the attendees? Yes. Uh, you could... Okay, we will send it to uh, your presentation to our attendees. And uh, one more time, thank you very much for your time and for your knowledge and your experience that uh, you shared with us and uh, like uh, confirming your participations and supporting us because like it's beginning and uh, it was really important for us uh, to have you with, with with us and to publish all of this uh, we don't think that it is like the end we will arrange a lot of uh, new occasion uh, new events and some and i hope that we will also have you in year one and we'll uh, be able to arrange um, like meeting with our colleagues and we can discuss yeah, very nice. all our Experience, we will do it for sure. Just a little bit, uh, we wait the station to like uh, calm down and we'll uh, to see like what is going on, and we will do a lot of interesting things together. I'm sure. So thank you very much. If you want to say something from your side for the our attendees and the first uh, people who will see you uh, your, your recordings also, so uh, it's uh, stage is yours. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I just want to wish everybody to stay safe and healthy. And for all hoteliers and colleagues, I know this is something you never experienced before. Something that hit you emotionally, physically, financially, impacted you in all kinds of the ways. And just know that our industry is very old. We have been there since the beginning and always will be there. It is something that we all will go through and there would be sun at the end. Thank you. Just stay safe and healthy. We will speak again. Thank you, dear attendees, that you participated. So enjoy your week. Uh, hope this week will be like full of the good news and the guests and new reservations. We really hope. So bye bye. Thank you very much, all of you. Thank you, Oksana. Bye bye.